Have you ever wondered how the digital battlegrounds of the gaming industry affect the very games we love and how we play them? Today, we're diving into a high-stakes conflict that's sending shockwaves through the gaming world. At the heart of this controversy is Nintendo, a titan in the industry, known for its relentless pursuit to safeguard its intellectual property. Their latest legal maneuver, a lawsuit aimed squarely at Yuzu, a popular emulator that's become a thorn in their side. Emulators, by design, allow gamers to play their favorite console games on other platforms, but they've always been ensnared in legal and ethical debates. Nintendo's argument is clear. Yuzu isn't just about nostalgia or preserving gaming history. It's a direct threat, enabling widespread piracy, especially of their latest hits like The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. But what does this mean for the future of gaming, emulation, and digital rights? Stay tuned as we analyze the intricacies of this lawsuit, unravel the broader implications for the industry, and explore what it could all mean for gamers around the world. Nintendo's storied history with emulation and piracy is a tale as old as the gaming industry itself. Renowned for their iconic franchises and innovative consoles, Nintendo has long waged war against the emulation of their games, viewing it as a direct threat to their intellectual property and revenue streams. Their legal battles have set precedents, shaping the boundaries of what is permissible in the digital gaming age. Enter Yuzu, a beacon in the world of emulation, particularly for Nintendo Switch games. This emulator stands out for its advanced capabilities, enabling gamers to play Switch games on PCS, often enhancing the game's performance and graphics. But it's not just about improved gaming experiences. Yuzu represents a challenge to the traditional gaming model, blurring the lines between console exclusivity and the open nature of PC gaming. The lawsuit Nintendo has filed against Yuzu's developers, Tropic Haze, is a pivotal chapter in this ongoing saga. Accusing them of facilitating piracy on a massive scale, Nintendo's legal team is targeting the very core of Yuzu's functionality. The emulator, they argue, sidesteps the Switch's security measures, enabling the piracy of games like The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom by decrypting them, a clear violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act DMCA. Nintendo's demands are severe the cessation of Yuzu's development, the surrender of its websites, and the destruction of all existing copies, highlighting the lawsuit's potential to set a new precedent in the conflict over emulation and copyright law. This lawsuit is more than just a legal battle. It's a statement signaling Nintendo's unwavering commitment to control the distribution and usage of their games, challenging the very ethos of the emulation community. At the heart of Nintendo's lawsuit against the Yuzu emulator is a multifaceted legal challenge that underscores the tension between intellectual property rights and the digital freedoms championed by the emulation community. Nintendo's legal claims are grounded in the assertion that Yuzu blatantly violates the Digital Millennium Copyright Act DMCA, particularly focusing on the anti-circumvention provisions that protect against the bypassing of technological measures put in place to control access to copyrighted works. Nintendo alleges that Yuzu doesn't just emulate the Nintendo Switch console, but actively circumvents its security features, enabling the piracy of Nintendo's copyrighted games. The emulator facilitates this by decrypting the games, which, according to Nintendo, constitutes a direct infringement of their copyright protections. This decryption process is pivotal, as it essentially unlocks Nintendo's tightly sealed content vault, allowing user users to play games without purchasing the console or the games themselves. The claim of Tyler 150,000 in damages per infringed Nintendo game is particularly striking, highlighting the severity with which Nintendo views these alleged violations. This figure isn't arbitrary. It's the maximum statutory damage award for willful copyright infringement under U.S. copyright law. By demanding such steep penalties, Nintendo aims to set a deterrent, signaling to other emulator developers the grave financial risks involved in creating software that infringes on their copyrights. Furthermore, Nintendo's demand for the seizure, impoundment, and destruction of all copies of the Yuzu emulator is an unprecedented move in the gaming industry. This action doesn't just seek to halt the distribution of Yuzu, it aims to eradicate its existence entirely. Such a demand underscores the depth of Nintendo's commitment to protecting its intellectual property and the lengths it is willing to go to prevent any form of piracy. The implications of this are vast, setting a potential precedent that could affect not only emulator developers, but also the broader community of gamers, developers, and digital rights advocates. 
This segment of the lawsuit raises critical questions about the balance between protecting intellectual property and fostering the technological innovation that emulators like Yuzu represent. While Nintendo's concerns about piracy are valid, the emulator also serves as a tool for preserving video game history and enabling enhanced gameplay experiences. The legal outcome of this case could have far-reaching consequences, potentially reshaping the landscape of game emulation, copyright enforcement, and the rights of gamers and developers alike. In analyzing this lawsuit, we delve into a complex debate that extends beyond the legal specifics. It touches on the future of gaming innovation, the ethics of emulation, and the evolving nature of digital ownership and copyright law. As this legal battle unfolds, it will undoubtedly influence the industry's approach to copyright enforcement, emulator development, and the delicate balance between protecting creative works and supporting technological advancement in the gaming world. As we delve into the ramifications of Nintendo's lawsuit against the Yuzu emulator, it's crucial to consider the broader implications for gamers, the gaming industry, and the landscape of digital rights. This legal battle isn't just about a single emulator. It's a landmark case that could reshape the future of gaming, emulation, and software ownership. For gamers who rely on emulators, the stakes are high. Emulators like Yuzu offer a way to experience games beyond the confines of the original hardware, often enabling enhanced graphics, modding, and accessibility features. They also serve a vital role in game preservation, ensuring that titles from past generations remain playable. However, should Nintendo succeed, the precedent could lead to a crackdown on emulation, restricting access to these games and stifling the community-driven innovation that emulators foster. Gamers might find themselves facing a narrower field of options, with legal risks overshadowing the benefits of emulation. The impact on the gaming industry and other emulator developers could be equally profound. A ruling in favor of Nintendo could embolden other companies to pursue similar lawsuits, potentially leading to a chilling effect on emulator development. Developers might scale back or abandon their projects due to the heightened risk of costly legal battles. This shift could stifle the technological exploration and creativity that emulation brings to the industry, hindering the development of tools that benefit not only gamers, but also researchers, historians, and content creators. Moreover, this lawsuit touches on fundamental questions about digital rights and software ownership. At the heart of the debate is the extent to which consumers can control the software and hardware they legally purchase. If the courts side with Nintendo, it could reinforce a precedent that limits users' ability to modify, tinker with, or repurpose their legally acquired digital products. Such a decision would not only affect emulators, but also potentially influence the broader tech industry, impacting everything from smartphones to smart appliances, where software plays a crucial role. Furthermore, this case could catalyze a shift in how digital goods are perceived and regulated. The outcome may redefine what ownership means in the digital age, potentially constraining the rights of users to alter or interact with their digital purchases creatively. It raises significant questions about the balance between protecting intellectual property and upholding consumers' rights to use their purchases freely. In essence, the repercussions of this lawsuit extend far beyond Yusu or even Nintendo. They touch upon the very principles that govern our digital lives, challenging us to consider how we navigate the intersection of technology, law, and consumer rights. As we continue to watch this legal drama unfold, it's clear that its outcome could have lasting effects, shaping the future of digital innovation, the rights of users, and the landscape of the gaming industry for years to come. The gaming community's reaction to Nintendo's lawsuit against Yuzu has been a maelstrom of concern, disappointment, and spirited debate. Many gamers fear the repercussions for the emulation scene, viewing this legal action as a threat to the preservation of video game history and the accessibility of older or hard-to-find titles. Social media platforms, gaming forums, and comment sections are abuzz with discussions, with a significant portion expressing solidarity with emulator developers, emphasizing the role of emulators in enhancing game accessibility and longevity. Industry experts and some gaming companies have offered varied perspectives, with some underscoring the importance of protecting intellectual property, while others highlight the innovative contributions of emulation to the gaming ecosystem. The lawsuit has sparked a broader conversation about the balance between copyright enforcement and technological innovation, with many calling for a nuanced approach that considers the interests of both creators and the gaming community. 
In summary, Nintendo's legal action against the Yuzu emulator encapsulates a pivotal moment in the ongoing dialogue between copyright law and the digital rights of users. This lawsuit is not just a legal battle, but a landmark case with the potential to set significant precedents affecting gamers, emulator developers, and the broader gaming industry. The potential outcomes of this lawsuit are manifold. A victory for Nintendo could embolden other companies to pursue stringent actions against emulation, potentially stifling innovation and limiting the tools available for game preservation. Conversely, a favorable outcome for Yuzu might uphold the legality of emulation under certain conditions, possibly encouraging a more open approach to software preservation and innovation within the legal framework. As we await the court's decision, the implications of this case will undoubtedly resonate far beyond this individual lawsuit, influencing future legal standards, industry practices, and the very culture of gaming itself. The outcome may well shape the future landscape of digital content, software ownership, and the rights of consumers and creators alike. Now, I turn the discussion over to you, the viewers. What are your thoughts on this legal battle? How do you see it impacting the future of gaming and digital rights? Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share your perspectives in the comments below. Your engagement helps drive our content and fosters a vibrant community discussion. Let's continue this important conversation together.